Hello and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks. Based upon a number of requests that I've received from viewers, I'm going to create a series of lessons to show you how to work with dates and times in Excel. So let's begin this series by learning how to work with dates. Have you ever been asked this question, what's today's date? Danny, what's today's date? Well, if I don't have my watch handy, but I am in Excel, I can use a great keyboard shortcut, control semicolon. So control semicolon enters into the cell the current date. It's a great way to timestamp your work. So for example, if you want to put in a timestamp of the date that you received a budget request or the day that you approved um, an expense allowance, you can timestamp it by using control semicolon. So this is a static date. This will not update but when we want to have a cell always show the current date, in other words, to update, we use the today function. So the today function is a great date function, equals today. And even though it does not require any arguments, we must supply a left and a right parentheses. This is also great for using in formula. So if I want to know tomorrow's date today, equals today, left parentheses, right parentheses, plus one, and now I can see tomorrow's date. And I'll just undo that with control Z. All right, now, the key to understanding how Excel is able to perform date calculations, in other words, what's the day 30 days from today when the invoice is due, is to distinguish between how Excel stores a date and how Excel displays a date. So over here, let's delete this. I'll use, once again, control semicolon for today's date. Now, I have formatted this cell to display a date. And I have a variety of different formats that I can choose from. But what's important is to understand that Excel, when it sees a cell that's a date, it's saying store a number. So over here, you see I have a reference to the cell where I put in control semicolon. What Excel is storing as the date is 40,521. Well, how does it come up with that serial number 40,521? As far as Excel is concerned, time began back on January 1st, 1900. In other words, day number one is January 1st, 1900. Day number zero is a phony date, January 0, 1900. If I put in a serial number 500, but I want to format it to show it as a date, then Excel will interpret this. It will display it as May 14th, 1901. So understanding the serial numbers that are behind a date, and anytime I want to see a serial number. So if I want to see the first day of the year in 2010, I can use this keyboard shortcut, Control Shift tilde. What I'm going to be doing is saying, give me the difference between 40,521, today's date, and 40,179, the day for January 1st, 19, uh, 2010. Right, let me use Control Z to undo this, and now let's see the result. How many days in between? Equals, and I'll point over to here, minus the first day of the year, 342 days in between those two dates. How Excel stores a date is a serial number. How Excel displays a number. Now let's come back in here into formatting. So you see over here in the formula bar, for each cell that I have coming down here in column J, I have a different format. But what is displayed up here in the formula bar is 12-9-2010. So I can spell it out as a full day. I can have it it's formatted in any number of formats, including this one down here as a Thursday. So a great keyboard shortcut to learn for formatting dates, regardless of the version of Excel you're using, Control plus 1. So for any cell that I'm in, Control plus 1, the number 1, brings up the Format Cells dialog box on the Number tab. And I can choose from the category of dates with any number of pre-formatted dates, or I can come down here and choose a custom date. So the way I was able to have 12.9.2010 display as Thursday, on that cell I did Control plus 1, I use the custom date. In this case, the custom date was DDDD, -D -D -D, stands for date. Four Ds will tell Excel to format it, to display it using the full spelling of that date. All right, now, 
Let's come over here and take a look at some other pitfalls with dates. Is it a number or is it text? The key to understanding if you have properly entered a date is look. How is it aligned in the cell? Is it aligned to the right? If so, it's a number. If it's aligned to the left, you're going to have problems in performing calculations. This is text. So this will not actually calculate. Now, I fooled this into being text by using an apostrophe. Whenever you want to have text or force text in a cell, make your first uh, entry the apostrophe. So in this case, the apostrophe for the date made it aligned to the left. Removing it turns it into a serial number formatted as a date. It aligns to the right. So pay attention to the alignment. Here's another little gotcha step. You want to enter in a fraction. So what I wanted to put in there was three quarters, three fourths, three um, uh, fourths. And look, what do I get? I get a date. So here's the trick. When you truly want to have in a fraction, what you need to do is you need to begin it with a whole number. So for example, zero and then a space and then put three fourths in there. And of course I can change the format. Notice that it's stored up there as 0 0.75. If I'd like to have 75% display there, I could use a keyboard shortcut, control shift, and the percent sign. So now I've displayed it as a percentage. And I'll do control Z to undo it. Alright, now let's come down here and see how we can enter a series of dates in Excel. Once again, I use control semicolon over here for the current date. When I want to autofill a series, regardless of the direction, I always point my mouse down here into the lower right corner. So you see how the mouse changes from that white cross, that big white cross, into that small little black cross? Now, when I drag down, I get a series of dates. So it's incremented by adding a date. Now, what's important is you pay attention over here to these autofill options. When we click over here on the arrow, you can see that in addition to filling that series, I could have copied those cells. Or what if I wanted to get a series of dates that omitted the weekends? In other words, omit Saturday and Sunday. I have an option to fill the weekdays. So over here, you see the 9th, which is a Thursday, the 10th is a Friday. It skipped 11th and 12th and it showed me the weekends only. I still have the autofill options over here. I could also fill it by incrementing by month. So December 9th, January 9th, uh, February 9th, etc. And I'll do control Z to undo that. Now if you are like many people and you ignore those little autofill options, let me give you a trick. Instead of autofilling using your left mouse button, use your right mouse button. So again, begin over here in the lower right corner but use your right mouse button you get that white arrow but you also get an immediate pop-up menu and it, that's a great little trick there so autofill using your right mouse button and you will get that pop-up now over here what if I want to use a formula? So I put in the today uh, function, and over here I said, all right, look at the cell above and add one to it. In other words, add one day. Well, now it's really very simple for me to just go down and add in one day. I could have said, well, what I want to do is I want to see every third day. So go to the cell that has the today function in it, and then add three to it, and now I can see every third day there in a series. All right, now I'm going to continue this series. I'll give you a preview of the next lesson. I'm going to go through some of the most useful date functions in Excel. So there's an example of the kind of tips that I offer in my DVD-ROM series, the 50 best tips for Excel 2007. And I'll look for you in the next lesson.